Hi everyone. Um, I know we were talking about revolutions today, but I do have my imperialism imperialism unit down pretty well. I just thought I could share with you guys all the lessons I have, uh, kind of in a similar format to how I did the foundations uh, unit. Just I'll send you a video or two videos for one of the lessons because um, these lessons are longer, uh, so they might need to be split up. But anyways, I'll just show you guys the imperialism lessons I have in the lesson plans I have in general. So this video will cover the first lesson as well as kind of the overall template of the class. So basically, this is imperialism. Uh, and the central question I'm asking my students are, what are the causes of imperialism and how does imperialism impact the economic, political, and social lives of the subjugated? Um, so it's kind of twofold, like what we talked about earlier. Um, kind of looking at the causes, so which, what kind of things cause people to become an empire and try to expand uh, through policies of imperialism and how are those people who are subjugated affected. Um, in this unit, I do kind of like a case study of three different cases of imperialism and the end goal for the unit is a final discussion. Um, as you can see right here in the final tab, where we kind of talk about all three forms of imperialism. And I'll have a video for that um, in like this little cycle of my sharing with you guys as well. But I'll just start from the top for right now. Um, so you click on it. The first one I look at is Spanish imperialism, God, glory, and gold, kind of what caused, what were the causes of imperialism for Spain? And that's kind of the common phrase associated with Spanish imperialism. And then when I'm going through these lessons, do keep in mind that my final goal in mind is a final discussion for my students. So a lot of what I'm doing is actual discussion prep uh, and how to have fruitful discussions um, is kind of one of the main skills I'm focusing on. Uh, comparison, because I'm comparing these types of in, uh, empires, uh, cause and effect, because it's imperialism and that's one of the things we agreed upon. And then um, kind of the practical skills discussions and how to have fruitful discussions. Um, so yeah, lesson goal for this one, uh, just like my other um, unit, I have the same format with lesson goal, key vocab, agenda, and materials, but sometimes I embed the materials in a list like this. Um, so it's not incredibly standardized, but it's pretty standardized. So the lesson goal for Spanish imperialism is being able to summarize the aspects of Spanish imperialism, especially the effects of the Spanish conquest of the New World on the native population. And there's many discussions and a three paragraph summary as kind of the ways that um, I'm assessing my students' knowledge. So this is the first like practice discussion I have. All of these unit, all these lessons have like little practice discussions. So when we get to the final discussion for the unit, um, it's not new and they already have plenty of time to practice being good at discussing certain things. And I'll show you how that works. Uh, key vocab, obviously we need to figure out what the term imperialism means. Uh, encomienda, um, which is in one of the documents, assimilate, assimilation, conquistadors, and Spanish missions. Uh, there's a lot of key vocab words in this first one, uh, because, well, I mean, one imperialism, that's like basically a key vocab word for all of them. And do keep in mind that I only have like three lessons and then a summative assessment, but these lessons are designed to take place over a long period of time. Uh, and there are certain little activities that you can break up into different days based off the flow uh, of your class. So the agenda is a teacher-led discussion on imperialism in the Spanish Empire. So I'll just give them some background context, uh, maybe with like little videos or images, or um, like maybe I'll even make a presentation about it. Uh, next up, they have information with background readings uh, of basic, so they can get a little bit more in depth of Spanish imperialism. And then finally, there is a, um, a Spanish mission virtual tour activity, which is kind of cool. Um, even though we can't do anything together because COVID and whatnot, they can still go online and do like a little tour of a Spanish mission, which I thought was kind of cool. And then there's a closing activity, which is what I described earlier, a uh, three paragraph summary. Because I think, at least for my class, at least the students are not great, but they seem to be much better with having time to write and summarize their key points and ideas than they are at on the fly discussion or answering discussion questions. So I'm going to kind of harness their strength um, at the beginning and let them do like more summary and paragraph kind of responses. But then throughout the unit, I slowly wean them off of that. And then they do more um, in-depth discussions with me in the class as a whole. Because at the end, 
it's like 75% of the grade is the discussion and then 25% of the grade is their um, kind of their summary paragraph. So background information reading with a primary source. I found this really nice textbook, but I divided it up into certain places that I want them to read in certain places they don't have to read. So I had pages 10 to 12 in this PDF, which are covering the age of exploration, the Spanish conquest of the Aztec and the Spanish conquest of the Aztecs. And then pages 14 and 15 talk about colon Spanish colonization of Mexico specifically. So they're not reading the entire reading, but you can make them read whatever pages you want them to read. I think it's a pretty effective thing. You can click on this to expand it out. It's kind of nice. Um, yeah. Uh, and then when they do this reading, they're supposed to define all the vocab terms, and then they're supposed to write down at least one question you had during the reading and write down at least one idea that surprised or interested you. So I'm kind of prepping them for how to do discussion prep there and how to have fruitful discussions. So when they do their readings, they're supposed to find certain things that interest them that they can talk about and also be building on the skill of reading and then bringing your reading to the discussion throughout the class. Uh, so when you're done with the reading, finish the or read this firsthand account from Bartolome de las Casas on the Spanish encomienda system and reflect on the following discussion questions. So they just click on this link as well. As you can see, it's embedded. I don't know if I'm going to do this in the future. I tried it out to see how they would like it, but I kind of like having all the materials concentrated in one spot. But it made the page look kind of nice, so I'll see if they prefer it this way. So he talks about the famous Bartolome de las Casas, talks about right here is his quote, uh, but he gives some background context, whichever this uh, book comes from. Um, so they can read this and it talks about a lot of the bad stuff that was happening um, to the native people from a first hand account. And then we have a discussion on the reading and a discussion on the first hand account. And these are the kind of questions we'll be asking them. So at the beginning, I do have like a lot of structured questions that they can prepare for. Uh, but then towards the end, they're allowed to go off um, academically, go off into other academic realms and kind of talk and expand upon the topic beyond what I've just prepared for them. That might be a little bit of ambitious of me and it might not happen. So I still do have these set questions for every discussion. But my hope is by doing certain things like this and kind of uh, promoting them to keep doing this type of stuff, um, they will start to go beyond just the set questions that I have and talk about things that interest them as well in the class in an academic fashion, of course. So. Also part of this lesson, which I would definitely split up into multiple days, is this virtual tour of a Spanish mission. So you just click on it, and then for some reason it gets you to this page, click on like wherever you want, and then you can click around and look at Spanish missions. So you can go to uh, El Camino Real, which I will, well, I'll just click on this for an example, and you can kind of like look around, and there's also accompanying videos on some of the, on some of the uh, pictures. Um, there's also descriptions. You can scroll around. It's like a fish lens kind of thing, whatever you call it. Um, yeah, I won't click on the videos, but you can. Um, I've had a lot of fun exploring. I like to pretend I'm actually there instead of cooped up in my house, I guess. Um, but then also um, they can use the Spanish mission, a map of the Spanish mission below to discuss because the discussion questions um, or the discussion question is how might this institution help assist in the goals of the Spanish imperialists? And I guess another question I should write here is how were those affected uh, by the institution of missions? Because it's important to look at both sides, both uh, the imperializer and then the people being imperialized, if that's a word, the colonizer and the people being colonized. But that's a better way to put it. Uh, and then, yeah, so we're going to discuss those type of questions. But I just kind of want them to have some time to kind of explore um, and not like super structured where they can just go around and look at the different things and experience what it was like to be in a Spanish mission. Uh, which is, I think, a very effective uh, benefit of this tour that I found. And then finally, the closing activity, kind of a summary so I can, one, get something in the gradebook, and two, check for their understanding, and three, so that they can kind of figure out exactly what they're supposed to know at this time period. I just broke down the activity or this lesson into three questions where they just have to define Spanish imperialism, the basics, and basically the basics of it, and then also the positive consequences and the negative consequences of imperialism. Um, because basically the debate is centered around the final discussion debate. Um, discussion that we have is centered around like what is the legacy of imperialism? What's the good that it's done? What's the bad that it's done? 
uh, what does it look like today? These types of questions. So we're, whenever we see imperialism, we're constantly going to be weighing the positives versus the negatives. And obviously, especially for Spanish imperialism, it's going to be a lot of negatives as opposed to positives. But I do want them to practice looking at both sides of the, uh, both sides of the aisle. So yeah, uh, that's really all I have for this lesson. Let me know if you guys have any questions about it. And uh, I'm really excited for this unit. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm really um, hoping that I can help you out a little bit. Um, and I'm totally open to suggestions as well. You guys have more experience than me um, in this job and working with students um, in the school district. So if you think I should alter my curriculum in any way, uh, feel free to let me know. And I'll be very receptive to any of your feedback. So thanks again for your time. Have a good one.